Welcome to Quantum's online training videos. In this video, we discuss the MLP and MLPI control units used in SKF's multi-loop automatic greaser systems. We'll go over the control unit operating logic and sequence, identify made components, go through navigation of the display, and the meaning and causes of alarms. The control unit is responsible for storing and pumping the grease. The top portion of the control unit, above the separation plate, is the grease reservoir. This indicator provides a quick visual on the level of grease in the reservoir. The bottom portion, below the separation plate, is where the pump and valving are located. Grease exits the control unit via two outlet ports which are located at the separation plate on the left side of the unit. SKF made a major design change to the control unit in about 2015. If you look at the nameplate, the older version model code begins with MLP. The newer version model code begins with MLPI. The most obvious difference between the MLP and the MLPI are the position and appearance of the outlet ports and select valves. On the MLP, the outlet ports are positioned on this rubber flange along with a bleed valve, which is used to purge air from the tank. The MLPI design pretty much centralized all of the connections and valves to a band on the left side of the unit. In this band on the left side of the unit are the two outlet ports, the bleed valve, a system relief valve, and the overfill relief valve. For both units, the fill port is on the right side of the unit. For the MLP, the fill relief is on the fill port. For the MLPI, it was moved to the other side with all the other valves and connections. The big job for the control unit is to pump the grease up to a high enough pressure to push the grease through the piping and stroke the doser. Since there are two control unit outlet ports, this process is repeated twice, once for port one and then again for port two. To keep track of all of this, the control unit monitors the pumping process in lubrication cycles, which is the time allocated for each of the outlet ports to be pressurized once. Therefore, half of each lubrication cycle is dedicated to each outlet port. For example, if the lubrication cycle is set to 30 minutes, then the control unit will be focused on outlet port one for 15 minutes, and then outlet port two for 15 minutes. The control unit starts a lubrication cycle by starting the pump to pressurize outlet port one. Once the doser has stroked and grease has been dispensed to the whole unit, the pressure rises and the control unit stops pumping and dumps the pressure in the line back to tank. The control unit then waits. If this pumping and dumping process took five minutes and the lubrication cycle is 30 minutes, then the control unit waits for 10 minutes to complete outlet port one's half of the cycle. At 15 minutes after the start of the lubrication cycle, the pump switches to outlet port two and starts the pump again. Once the doser has stroked and grease has been dispensed to the whole unit, the control unit stops pumping and dumps the pressure in the line back to tank. The control unit then waits again until the lubrication cycle time is complete. Then it switches back to outlet port one and starts the process all over again. If you need to troubleshoot the control unit, please consider this as a warning. Do not ever remove the screw from the top of the unit. The reservoir is composed of a lid, a wall, and a floor, which are held together by a screw onto a central shaft. The whole reservoir assembly is tensioned by a pretty strong spring. If you loosen that bolt, the lid, walls, and floor of the reservoir will separate and grease will go everywhere. Listen to a person who did it and then had to clean up the mess. 
Do not remove this screw unless the reservoir is completely empty and you have the unit on a workbench along with some seriously strong friends to help you put it back together again. However, you can loosen a screw on the bottom of the unit to remove the cover from the bottom portion, which will reveal the good stuff. To help understand that good stuff at work in the control unit, Quantum's awesome possum engineering team made this nifty schematic. There's a small electric motor located here to operate the pump. To control which outlet port is selected, a two-position, four-way directional control valve is provided, which is located here. To measure the pressure on each outlet port, a pair of pressure sensors is fitted. They are here on the MLP or here on the MLPI. In case of overpressurization from the pump, a relief valve is fitted. On the MLP, this relief valve is fitted to the top of the manifold and discharges directly to tank. On the MLPI, the relief valve is fitted here with the outlet ports. Finally, to provide indication for a low reservoir level alarm, a proximity sensor is fitted to the bottom of the reservoir here. Now let's pull this all back together and check out the display. We can monitor what the control unit is doing via this display. The display is fitted with a three character display, three indicator lights, and three buttons. Let's start with the three indicator lights. The lights are labeled one, two, and P. Light one, or light two, will illuminate green to let you know which half of the lubrication cycle the control unit is on. In other words, it indicates which outlet port is currently selected by that two position valve we showed a moment ago. If this light turns red, it means that there's an alarm condition on that line. The light labeled P illuminates green while the pump is running. It illuminates red to indicate a low level condition in the grease reservoir. Now let's talk about the display. The display tells you what's going on using codes. When you first walk up to the control unit, you may see three decimals blinking on the display. This is power save mode. The control unit reverts to power save mode if the display buttons haven't been used for about four minutes. To exit power save, simply push any button. The display then indicates the time since the pump stopped in hours and minutes, with the hours to the left of the decimal and the minutes to the right of the decimal. Press the blue right arrows to view the pressure on the outlet ports. Press once to see the current pressure on outlet port one. Then press again to see the current pressure on outlet port two. Press the green up arrow button to see a count of the total lubrication cycles. A decimal point is used, when relevant, to indicate thousands. Continue pressing the green up arrow to cycle through the control unit set points, which will display in this order. Lubrication cycle time, shown in hours and minutes, with the hours to the left of the decimal and the minutes to the right of the decimal. Maximum pumping time in seconds. Low pressure set point in bar. High pressure set point in bar. When an alarm condition exists, an alarm code will display. AGR indicates an alarm for a low grease level in the reservoir. ALP indicates that the required high pressure set point was not reached within the maximum pumping time for a pressurization cycle. AHP indicates the outlet port was above the low pressure set point at the start of the pumping cycle. Another thing you may see on the display is DC. After the pump has run, the pump will be stopped for a period of time to allow the outlet line pressure to relieve to the reservoir. During this discharge time, DC will appear on the display. Finally, we have the set button. The set button 
is used to manually start or stop the pump, to reset an alarm, or to initiate programming mode, depending on what is currently shown on the display. If the display is showing its default value of the time since the pump stopped, then pressing the set button will manually start the pump or stop the pump if the pump is already running. If you have used the green up buttons to show a set point value on the display, then pressing the set button will initiate programming mode. If an alarm code is displayed, then pressing the set button will reset the alarm and the pump will try again on the same line. As already mentioned, the control unit has three alarms. Let's go over each of these and the steps to take to clear an alarm. AGR indicates an alarm for low grease level in the reservoir. A quick visual of the level indicator on the front of the reservoir can prove if this alarm condition exists. However, Keep in mind that the indicator is a magnet, which is attracted to a piston inside the reservoir. There have been some occasions where the little magnet in the level indicator flipped and dropped to the bottom of the indicator tube, which made it look like the reservoir was always empty. This is kind of a pain to fix, since moving the magnet means taking apart the reservoir, which I've already warned you is a huge mess. However, if the grease level really is low, then the simple fix to this problem is to fill the reservoir with grease. Refer to work instruction 31 and the associated video to learn how. ALP indicates that the required high pressure set point was not reached within the maximum pumping time. The greaser was not able to fill the output line sufficiently. The most likely causes of this alarm are a break in the output line between the control unit and the doser or air stuck in the output line. Check the outlet lines to ensure everything is connected and secure. Then follow the instructions in work instruction 31 to purge air from the control unit. If that doesn't work, you may have to disconnect the output line at the control unit and the doser and manually charge the piping with grease. If that's the case, Fill the control unit end and have precautions set up at the doser to minimize the mess. Finally, keep in mind that the length and diameter of the piping can have an effect. If the piping run is very long, it might not be possible for the control unit to build up sufficient pressure in the line within the maximum pumping time. This is an important fact to keep in mind when designing or commissioning an auto greaser system. AHP indicates the outlet port was above the low pressure set point at the start of the pumping cycle. The control unit relieves the pressure on the line after each pumping cycle, so under normal circumstances, this back pressure wouldn't exist, and the high pressure alarm won't happen, even if the line is blocked. The only way to get this alarm is if someone applies grease pressure to the outlet lines externally from the control unit. For example, someone is trying to fill the reservoir from a grease point on the outlet piping. If that's the case, try disconnecting the outlet port to remove the back pressure. Then, either remove the manual grease point or install a check valve between it and the control unit so the grease point can only be used to fill the piping. And, always fill the reservoir using the dedicated fill port. That's how the MLP and MLPI control units work in an SKF multi-lube automatic greaser system. That's all folks.